Hey guys and welcome to CyberZypher. Today we're going to see a very interesting video. So, let me guess. You have bought your own Raspberry Pi after a long time of expectation, but you need to have a monitor to use it, right? But what if I tell you that you don't even need a monitor to use a Raspberry Pi? What? Then how do you use it? Well, you can use your Raspberry Pi with just another computer. You don't even need a separate monitor for that. You can use your existing computer which you used to uh, you know, flash the OS onto your Raspberry Pi. Let me show you quickly how it's done, okay? okay. So first of all, uh, you need to boot into the OS of your Raspberry Pi. And make sure that you have configured your SSID in the networking part of uh, of the Raspberry Pi OS in the Raspberry Pi Major. It can be done easily by getting into the Major, and then you just need to choose the OS. For example, I'll choose this OS. Okay, I don't have any storage here, but you will be having this settings icon here. Once you click that, you will be getting this pop up. So from here, you need to make sure that you have a set and host name, and then you need to make sure that you have enabled SSH because you'll be needing SSH. And then in the username and password, you need to make sure that you have a password. So let's set a password, and then make sure that you have configured your wireless LAN. If you don't have a wireless LAN, then make sure that you have connected through an Ethernet cable. Okay. So I have it, so I'll just connect it. Here I have, yeah, everything's right. Okay, and settings, and then, yeah, we're done. So after that, choose the storage and write the OS and boot into your Raspberry Pi. Since you have already configured your network, your Raspberry Pi will automatically connect to the network once it gets booted. So here, on my router's parental control panel, I have Raspberry Pi since it has been booted it is showing here and it has been connected so now at this point if you're in windows open command prompt or if you are in linux or mac open terminal but i'll be using a software called putty because it seems uh, you know it, it it is seems more convenient to me and now at this point you need to just enter the uh, the, the ip address of your raspberry pi in this given space or if you're going to do that in command prompt or terminal, we just need to type SSH and the username is the, is the default username is pi at and the username and, and, and the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. In my case it's 192.168.0.131 and once you hit enter, so here you will be getting sometimes you'll get this error. So to remove it, just type SSH dash key gen and then give a colon and capital R and type the IP address of your Raspberry Pi hit enter and now just type the previous command type yes and type the password that you entered while booting or while flashing the OS so in my case and there we have it. we are inside our Raspberry Pi but I'll just connect it with my putty so yeah 192.168.0.131 hit enter accept login as pi password there we go we have it and then now at this point we need to get into Raspberry's setup okay the post installation setup we can do that by typing sudo apt get update and then uh, let me just make it a bit bigger okay i cannot so i'll just zoom it so it, it will be more useful to you so now what you need to do is just type sudo raspi config hit enter and at this point we just need to change two settings here one is the the interface options inside that 
go here to the i3 BMC setup hit enter and would you like to would you like the VNC server to be enabled just navigate to yes and hit enter okay and then the next is go to display options and then go to VNC resolution and choose your respective resolution of your monitor in my case it's 1920 by uh, by 1080 so it's a 1080p monitor so I'll just hit enter okay and now just click finish and do you like to reboot now yes so we need to reboot so the raspberry pi is rebooting so now you can see that the uh, the raspberry pi has been vanished from here so we need to wait for it to get appeared here again also guys we are so close to get 1k subscribers on our channel so if you didn't subscribe yet please 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 make sure that you have subscribed because no one is subscribing to the channel they're just watching the videos and they're just going away so please please subscribe to cyber to get more content like this so here we can see that we have raspberry pi that's appeared again so at this point you'll be needing a software on your windows or linux or any machine it can be a, um, it, it's just a VNC client. In Linux, you will be having so many VNC clients, but in Windows, there is a thing called Real VNC. Go ahead and download the software, guys, because it it, it, it is available for for you know it, it's it's on multi platform, so you can just go ahead and download it. Just go to VNC server, and we have it. You just need to download this and I have downloaded it so I'll just open this so I'm sorry you need to download the VNC viewer not the server okay so now we can see that um, I, since I already connected to my Raspberry Pi it's showing here but uh, let's just delete this because I'm going to do it again right so now just go ahead and type the IP address of your Raspberry Pi again and then continue username is pi password and boom so we have connected to raspberry pi click on full screen to enter full screen and now you can access your raspberry pi easily you know you can, you can do anything like you can open terminal look how smooth it is and you can just enter command sudo apt get update or you can just go ahead and so that's how you connect or that's how you use your raspberry pi without a monitor and if you like this video don't forget to give a like share and subscribe please make sure that you have subscribed because we're going to reach 1k subscribers it's a it, it since it's a small milestone but it's a huge step to move further so yeah i'll meet you guys in my next video thank you